everybody. Welcome to my channel. I'm Shelly Peters. This is the place to embrace the plant-based life. Uh, today, I want to talk to you about your relationship with food, and I'm going to describe to you about my this union, me and food, was ripe with unrealistic expectations served on a bed of unspoken agreements. What were those agreements? Well, they included, but were not limited to providing um, comfort when life was going wrong, uh, providing uh, distraction when I was bored, and also numbing, and really companionship when I was lonely. Even if the re relationship is dysfunctional, it can turn out to be the safer bet in the grand scheme of relationships in your life. Growing up, my mother had often had a hair trigger temper and uh, something that you sort of had to walk on eggshells around. But when it came to her pies, or really any of her baking, date squares were another thing that she did really well, you could have as many slices of pie or as many date squares as you wanted and she was happy. Her anxiety kept her running from anything that caused the slightest bit of discomfort. So I adopted her love of food and her avoidance of pain, definitely not by choice, uh, by necessity, because as we know, little kids adapt to whatever their primary caregiver needs, and that's what I did. And that was really kind of the genesis to my dysfunctional relationship with food. I started eating a plant-based diet, I came face to face with my broken relationship with food. I started noticing that I was emotionally eating um, in the evenings, you know, after I would have a, you know, a, a, a difficult day, or, you know, my complex life was bringing up all kinds of emotions and I would sit down and I would have all kinds of um, emotions bubbling up and boom, I would have an angry, or sorry, I would have a hungry, anxious, I was probably angry too. I had a hungry, anxious feeling in my stomach and you know what? Snacking seemed to soothe that. I thought I was like starving. Despite the fact that I would eat a really good dinner, I would think I was starving. But in fact, it was really um, all kinds of emotional issues coming up and I was feeling it in my stomach. You know, snacking seemed to soothe the stomach and the cycle would continue uh, on and on. Um, it, was, uh, it wasn't really until I started to, uh, you know, explore my feelings and needs that I even recognized this is what I was doing. Another interesting discovery was that on one hand, I had incredible reverence and respect for good quality ingredients and amazingly prepared foods, but I would sometimes just scarf the food down without even really tasting it or appreciating it, really trying to numb whatever I was feeling. I could see the patterns. I could see after I'd finished a meal and thought, I don't even remember what that tasted like. And if I thought about it, I had been you know, upset, anxious, uh, hadn't dealt with my feelings and I was stuffing food down to try to calm those feelings and feel better. You know, I would simply scarf down food sometimes and not even experience the taste um, because I was really looking for emotional relief from the discomfort that was residing right in my belly. That's kind of where my anxiety is and I think that that's true for a lot of people. Um, my newfound awareness um, through starting to eat a plant-based diet and really wanting to uncover my relationship with food um, led me to, of course, journaling. Um, anybody who, you, any of you who follow me know I'm a huge advocate of journaling and um, I use my journal to start to explore patterns and, and really start to uncover what my relationship with food, with food was. I needed to ask myself, what would a healthy relationship with food look like? And I thought, you know, I think it would be a conscious and thoughtful appreciation of ingredients, of the dishes, of flavors, aroma, presentation, and artistry. I know how much work it takes to make a really good meal, and I want to be able to appreciate that. And I want slow and methodical eating with thoughtful portions. Um, not, uh, you know, often I would heap my bowl with something because I was upset and I just wanted that comfort. And I really want to be thoughtful about the portions and uh, with a curious focus on the experience of, of eating the food, of enjoying it and visually experiencing it and then of course tasting it. I think a good relationship would be small bites, slow chewing and tasting and you know what? Eating uh, with intention, not eating in front of the television, not eating 
um, while you're doing something else or eating on the run. If at all possible, I wanted to start eating um, intentionally. Um, I wanted gratitude for the experience and the time to appreciate the meal, which really would come from, you know, putting a little bit more respect and reverence on food and my appreciation of it. I want my relationship to be steeped to respect and to understand that I need good food to fuel my body, to heal my body, and that I would honor and value that um, the role that that food had for me. Um, that I wanted nutrient-dense foods so that I would know I'm feeding my body in a way that is going to be healing, not disease-producing. You know, and while I want to experience, obviously experience pleasure with eating my food, um, and I would def will definitely, I, and, and I do definitely set up situations where, you know, I have, you know, celebrations with wine and decadent food and because I organize it that way. What I don't want is I don't want the only pleasure I'm getting in a day to come from food. I want to be able to enjoy it but I also want to have other things in my life that I gain pleasure from. And I think oftentimes when you have a dysf dysfunctional relationship with food, it becomes the center point of pleasure for the day. Um, I know it certainly was in my experience and I would be looking forward to that treat or snack or whatever it was when there are so many better ways to find pleasure. Again, I obviously I love cooking and I find a lot of pleasure in food, but I'm talking about it being a healthy amount of pleasure and that those kind of that kind of hyper focus is saved for you know um, doing things in your life that bring you pleasure like hiking or uh, you know having um, t spending time with your family or in my case it would be training my dog or walking in the forest with my dog um, and here here's the cool part of all this you know tied to my relationship with food when I understood that it was so dysfunctional. The, the, also tied to that is my, is my relationship with my body. I really think it's hand in hand. And if I love and respect my body and I want to move it and listen to its needs and um, exercise and stretch it and uh, be conscious about what I'm doing with my body, um, then inevitably I think it's connected to starting to have a healthier relationship with food because you start to view food a little bit differently. And it, that's definitely what happened for me. When I started eating plant-based and I started seeing, um, you know, a, both the fact that the, this, these healthy foods could heal and transform my body to, so that my aging process was going to be wonderful and I was going to feel vibrant and alive. And then I started looking at my body and saying, well, how am I respecting and honoring my body and am I moving it? Am I making it a priority to exercise, to stretch, to meditate? I'm filling my life up in other ways. I don't need to turn to food to escape the discomfort that I'm feeling when I'm already tuning in and dealing with, with the discomfort in my body and in my mind with meditation, with journaling, with that sort of thing. So you know, it, was, it becomes easier to see good plant-based foods as healing for the body that I love and respect so much and, you know, junk food being more disease producing. And in fact, I wouldn't want to do anything to this beautiful body of mine and cause it to become sick or diseased. So I really think there's a, a real link between the two, looking after yourself, your body, changing your relationship with your body, and then, of course, changing your relationship with food. So the questions I've asked myself, and I encourage you to ask yourself, to dig into your relationship with food and your body is, how would you describe your relationship with your body? Um, journal that. How would you describe your relationship with it? Is it a tortured one? Are you really tuning in and listening to your body? Are you honoring and respecting it? Is it a priority for you? It's the only one you have. I hope it is. And what would a healthy body look like and feel like to you? Another great question to journal. I, I, I regularly do this because my health has be, is so great and I feel so vibrant and alive, I still dig in and I still want to say, am I tuning in enough? Am I um, listening to my body? Is there some way that I can, I can augment what I'm doing so that I am really honoring this amazing body that I'm so grateful for? 
Um, you know, and then you can ask the same questions about food. What's your relationship like with food? Journal that. Um, what would a healthy relationship with food look like? I described that a little earlier in the, in the video. So you do the same. Describe what you would think would be for you a healthy relationship with food. So, um, as you all know, journaling is a big part of my life. And I, I, I think that journaling is such a powerful exercise in connection to yourself, which let's just recap. Really, I think a healthy relationship with your food, with food and a healthy relationship with your body starts with connecting to yourself. So I'm suggesting that you journal and dig into all this and let it unfold. You don't have to be perfect. Just dig into it and you'll be amazed at what you learn and how you can start slowly tweaking and developing these better relationships. I brought out my RX Empathy Kit because it's what I use to journal. Uh, it's, it's a journaling tool that you can, you can use to dig deeper. Um, there are four decks of cards, um, feelings, Two is needs, three are the action steps to meet those needs, and four are the inspirational questions, which I love and I've talked about before. I did an entire series on, on uh, my social media channels um, about um, answering all those questions um, at some point uh, in the past. So um, this is an example of, here's the feeling. So when I'm, I'm struggling uh, with, um, you know, feeling... Look at that, exhausted, right on the front. I'm struggling a little bit with exhaustion this week. I'm pretty tired, so that was appropriate. But if I, if I go through and I identify what my feelings are, and I, I then um, honor and respect the fact that I'm feeling that way, and then I can check my, find out what my, based, what my needs are, that these, un, these feelings are, the unmet needs that these feelings are requiring, once you identify what your needs are, then this, this deck will actually help you just brainstorm what is a really um, life-enhancing way to meet those needs. An example would be when I, when I used to snack in the evenings and I was lonely uh, and I identified that I was actually lonely, I really needed connection. I actually didn't need a bag of chips. So when I uncovered that, that was a little bit embarrassing, but Never mind. It it really opened my eyes to how about actually meeting my need instead of reverting to bad habits just to mask the feelings that are coming up because those needs aren't met. And I want to be able to meet my needs. I want to get to know myself so well that I'm going to say, oh, you know what? I'm feeling a little bit um, disconnected and lonely. I need to have, call someone or maybe I'm going to have someone over or I'll book a lunch tomorrow, whatever it is. Um, the other, as I said, the inspiration deck is fantastic. They're de deeper questions, big questions that you can journal and, and, and get to know yourself uh, even better. If you don't uh, have the kit or you are not interested in purchasing it, you can purchase it on ShellyPeters.com. And if, you, if that's true, then you can just go to my website and I have um, in the downloadable um, section of my website, I have a list of the feelings and needs. That's the bare bones of what you want to um, uncover for yourself and then you can strategize how to meet those needs most effectively most in a, in a most in the best possible life enhancing way and so you can you can uh, download those two pdfs and you can have them on hand and they can be your journaling tool as well i just want you to journal and i want you to get to know yourself even better so that's kind of uh what I want to talk about today is my unbelievably dysfunctional relationship with food and how it has changed. And I now uh, have a relationship that is so much healthier. And yes, I occasionally, when life goes tilt, I will feel those old habits coming back again. I recently <laughs> had my ex-husband pop up in my life again in a not so nice way. And I had a couple of days where I could just feel the old habits starting up again. And the good news is I'm aware of them now. So I gave myself lots of compassion. I said, hey, I'm not here to be perfect. I'm a human. And I understood what I was doing and I was able to get back on track, certainly a lot sooner than I, I could in the past. I didn't even understand what was going on in the past. So um, I encourage you to do the same. The key to changing your relationship with your food with, and with food and with your body is really connecting to yourself. So I encourage you to do this. Um, stepping out of your regular destructive habits 
and your bad relationship with food um, and getting clearer on who you are and what you're feeling, what you're needing um, is literally a game changer. It is, it, your quality of life will go from hmm, not so great to amazing because it, we, we are all complex beings and to get to know yourself and to get to love yourself and your body is the greatest gift you can give yourself. So I encourage you to do that. So thanks for joining me. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give me a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe if you want more videos like this. I, you can subscribe and they come, my videos come out every Monday morning at 7.30 in the morning.